I think over time I've developed my own style. Um, I, as a photographer, certainly there are people who will say that's a Trevor Cole photograph, and you know I'm 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 quite humble about my images in the sense that I think I like it, but it's only when other people mention, you know, on social media or wherever else. Trevor, that's a really good image. Or when I do enter a competition and, uh, you know, I win something sometimes and sometimes, you know, it's as if it doesn't get seen at all. Um, I think I'm not, as I said, I'm not very good at advertising myself. I wish I was much better at promoting myself and I wish I had a larger photo tour following. But those that do come, I think, spread the word. And I think for me, I take time to help people with their photography. So, you know, I will help people with their aperture, with their metering, with their ISO, with their composition. Whereas I know some photo tours and photo tour leaders just take people to the spot and let them get on with it. And then some people want to just get on with it because they're very, very confident and know what they're doing and they've been to many tribal uh, groups before. But usually I have two or three people on each trip who want a little bit of help. And I even at the end, if we've got electricity, if they've got a laptop, I will show people how I edit my photographs. I'm not shy about keeping the way I do it a secret. I try and tell people this is what I do. And I really, my editing is so incredibly simple. I don't use Photoshop. I just use Lightroom and, and Neek software. And literally, if I can't edit a photo in two minutes or three minutes or five minutes max, then, I, you know, I, 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 I think, okay, it's, it's a reject. Um, I try and get it all in the camera or as much as possible in the camera. Um, so being relaxed, having a sense of humor, having a good laugh with people, uh, word of mouth is probably the, the, the best way of getting people to, uh, come along on tour. Yeah. So I take from that, basically your teaching skills, um, is the biggest value. I mean, obviously you're. Your, your photography is amazing in itself, but I think, um, by the sounds of it and I've yet to experience it, but it, it uh, the, the teaching, the way you can give back and obviously the way you approach people with, um, with those techniques or with, uh, storytelling or whatever it might be that they're having, having an issue with. How was your, that style and the voice that you have with the images, how was that shaped? Did you kind of have a deliberate and conscious decision where oh, I, I want my photos to look like this, whether you're thinking about it in camera or whether you're thinking about it uh, on the computer, how, how did you shape that style? Cause it's, it is an important, um, well, I mean, many people believe it's important to, to have your own style. I think it's even more important to have a voice, but you know, certainly a cohesive style or cohesive look, whatever that might be. And it's difficult for many people to to really figure that out. So how, how did you figure that out? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I think if I look back 10 years at my photographs, my photography has changed a lot. The way in which I edit has changed a lot. I try now to push myself to each time, each year to developing different ways of photographing. I used to be really well, and I, I used to take a lot of landscapes and still still will locally, but I used to be more the portrait, the face, the, the, the tight image. Now I also think it's really important to have the context, the village, life in the village. And going to the Mandari cattle camps in South Sudan really blew my mind as far as that sort of thing because you were more often than not looking at the big scene. And I think it's really important. I think you mentioned it earlier, you know, a face 
is one thing, but a face along with a village hut, with a, a, a group of people, makes a difference. So I would have to say my, my, my photographic style, my particular way of, of editing, of looking at things, has changed over time. Um, but about four or five years ago, I started to do what a lot of peop other people weren't doing. And instead of saturating my images, I started to desaturate and try to make the skin tones, the, the really bright clothes they wear, a little bit more subdued. So if someone's wearing really bright red or bright blue, I, I turned those down so that people didn't see those when they first look at the photograph, but actually see the face of the person and the physique of the person that is wearing those clothes first rather than the very bright embellishments. So I tend to desaturate um, and I, I always make sure that as far as possible, um, the light is good. You'll, you'll, you'll see quite a few of my images with a black background. It's, it's usually because I've shot them in a doorway, but sometimes I use a black cloth. So I try to be as diverse as possible in my photography, but I definitely have developed um, and changed my style. <clears throat> last, last year, you're probably aware of this. I I took myself off on a on a photo trip just um, uh, as an adventure, really. Um, I went to Pakistan for ten days, um, and then I crossed the Khyber Pass and spent another ten days in Afghanistan. And you know that was street photography and people again, but different to the tribal photography. And yet similar in many ways, because it's all about interacting again with the people. But I edit those in exactly the same way, but it's a street context. And I loved it. The people were fantastic in both countries. Mm -hmm.